Today's question I want you to answer down in the comments and I want you to argue with me about can a movie be too long? We're talking about two movies today where I've seen uh, people either on Twitter or on Facebook or on uh, bathroom stalls uh, arguing that they are too long uh, and I think that's uh, one of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard uh, because this is also the day and age of streaming television where you have people uh, at parties telling you, oh, you know, like, give so-and-so on uh, Hulu flicks for the first eight episodes, uh, and then once you really push through that, that's when it gets good. That's ridiculous to me. Uh, films... Uh, can be as long as they want, they just have to justify their length. And these are two films, I think, that really justify their length. Hello, I'm Adam Caesar. This is Project Black T-Shirt, the channel where we take a recently released horror movie or a recently reissued horror movie, and then we pair it with a horror book recommendation that you may enjoy if you enjoyed that film. Today we're going to be talking about two movies, two pretty recent movies, uh, as far as these things go, because I usually talk about uh, movies from the 70s, 80s, 80s. 90s, what have you, uh, but today we're going to talk about two films uh, that are either in theaters or, or have just recently left theaters, Panos Cosmatos' Mandy and Luca Guadagnino's remake of Suspiria. So first off, I want to talk about Suspiria. This is uh, Luca Guadagnino's uh, kind of quasi-remake, kind of reboot, kind of reimagining of Dario Argento's pivotal uh, supernatural Italian psych horror freak out Suspiria. Originally going to be uh, David Gordon Green who just redid Halloween a few weekends ago but it became art house film director uh, Luca Guadagnino's project to remake, to reimagine Suspiria and, 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 and many people were just like why would you do that? Why, why, why remake Suspiria? And I think literally within the first 10 minutes the film tells you uh, it's not really remaking Suspiria. That's what's great about Luca Guadagnino's Suspiria. It shares the same title. It shares kind of the same subgenre. Uh, but there's also, there's, after that, there's very, very little um, in common with Argento Suspiria. And that's, that's, um, that's one way to remake a movie. And that's kind of definitely the way to remake uh, such a dreamlike, impressionistic a uh, singular film as Suspiria is to just make your own dreamlike, impressionistic, artistic uh, Suspiria. And, and this is a movie that I saw uh, right up the block at the, uh, at the multiplex here in Philadelphia. The only uh, theater in Philadelphia that was showing Suspiria, even though it went wide last Friday, um, it went like quasi wide. But this is a movie that if it is playing near you, you should go right now. I'm going to try to get this video up. Um, before Suspiria leaves theaters. This is a movie that if you, if it's anywhere near you, if you have any interest in seeing this movie, probably don't even listen to me talk about it. Probably skip uh, to the Mandy review, but um, if you have any interest in seeing this movie, I would check your local listings. Um, go see this movie in a theater. It looks great. It sounds great. It should be experienced on the biggest screen possible. It's going to lose something when you watch it on Amazon Prime in a couple months. And part of the things it's going to lose is that, that kind of communal experience of being in a theater and seeing this weirdo movie. It is, it is two hours and 32 minutes. It uses every single one of those minutes uh, effectively to draw you into this foreboding ballet, school ballet company. That's what it does have in, com in common with Argento Suspiria. Um, we have our young uh, American ingenue played here by uh, Dakota Johnson uh, of Fifty Shades of Grey fame. Um, this is actually the only the second film I've seen her in. I, I saw her in um, uh, Bad Times at the El Royale just last month. Um, but she's wonderful in both of these pictures. She's really good in this movie. And it has Tilda Swinton in a, uh, in a dual role. Tilda Swinton is, is, no, um, is no stranger uh, to Guadagnino. Uh, she starred in his film I Am Love, which is a movie I really liked. What's great about this director is he's never, he's never made a movie like this. He's, he's, he's made... Um, Call Me By Your Name, I Am Love. He's made, he's made kind of art house, you know, from, the, from what I've sampled of his, uh, of his filmography, romances in, in, a, in, a, in a way. They're, they're, these are movies that play, like at the Landmark Cinema Change, these are movies that play art houses. Uh, these are not uh, movies that have graced the pages of Fangoria. Suspiria is, is, is incredibly metered in its pace. 
Um, we, we, we have a lot going on. It, unlike the uh, original Suspiria where it gets kind of dislocated from the real world in a, in a way, this Suspiria takes place uh, at a very specific point in time in Berlin, Germany. Um, we have kind of the, the, the Biedermannhof hijackings and, and Lufthansa hijackings kind of going on in the background as all of our like front story takes place as all of this this intrigue with witches and covens and 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 sacrifices and and giving yourself over to dance in a in a, almost like giving your soul over to dance this this um kind of vast conspiracy within this coven these this kind of power plays of of, of voting in a, a new mother a new mater um it's 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 super, super good. It's almost impossible to talk about the plot without really di diving into it and spoiling it. Uh, there are at least two scenes. Um, one scene that takes place, it's the first kind of horror horror scene in the movie, but I think it's an all-timer. It is, it is gross as all hell, and um, it's, it's brutal, and it's actually beautiful because it's juxtaposed with kind of Dakota Johnson's first big dance number, and this is a horror film with dance numbers. But, wow, the, the, the makeup effects, super gross, the sound, uh, it's, got a, it's got a beautiful score by Tom York. Um, he even like kind of he comes in and he starts singing on some tracks. It's, 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 it's a real uh, mind bender of a picture. And like I said, it's, it's something to see um, in a theater. Even if, you, even if you come back to this page and you comment and you tell me how much you hated it, uh, I'm not sorry I made, I made you go. I'm not sorry I told you to go. Because it's, it's really something to see. It's really, it's really an odd film. It's a film you're going to have probably strong opinions on either way. It was a movie that took me a good three days to kind of think about and digest and just be like, did I see what I thought I saw? Does this mean what I thought it means? Um, it's it's going to be a real interesting movie to unpack and rewatch um, and, and read about. I haven't, I haven't read any kind of uh, reviews or academic pieces on it, but I think there's going to be a million uh, for, uh, for years to come because it's, it's a dense movie um, and really, really great, I thought. Changing gears a tiny bit, but not really all that much, we are gonna talk about Mandy, Panos Cosmatos' uh, second feature after Beyond the Black Rainbow. This is Mandy starring Nicolas Cage. Uh, Nicolas Cage almost at this point, um, I think, uh, one of our great actors, one of our finest, uh, most dedicated character actors who makes interesting decisions and is, is, is completely unpretentious in his highbrow, lowbrow, how he chooses uh, to take on roles and, and, and weirdly unselective and very busy. Um, I've always thought of him uh, as, as, as kind of a, a great actor and, and, uh, and, and, and a brave actor, but I think only now are we getting away from this kind of, this image of, of Nicolas Cage as a meme uh, and are kind of really starting to seriously appreciate Nicolas Cage as a performer uh, across from Andrea Riseborough, who plays uh, the titular Mandy herself. Um, this is a, uh, a movie that is slower paced. It has this kind of doom metal drone to it. Uh, in the beginning, we are, we are getting to know um, Nicolas Cage's red character, Red Miller, although I, they call him that in the special features, they call him that in the, in the credits. I'm not actually even sure we ever see his name or he's ever referred to by his first name. Uh, but he, uh, he's, a, he's a lumberjack. Um, he's kind of in the Pacific Northwest hanging out with his um, artist, metalhead, wife, uh, girlfriend, living girlfriend, Mandy. Uh, we see their, their relationship is really tender. We get a sense of Mandy as a, maybe a little bit of a damaged person. Um, maybe they're both damaged people and they've kind of found each other and they have this little sanctuary. It's really nice. It's really iconic. Uh, and uh, then these um, quasi-Manson family, quasi-Partridge uh, family, Carpenter family, hippies roll into town. This is 1983. Um, and they take a liking to Mandy, their, her their leader, their kind of Charlie Manson type uh, leader, takes a liking to Mandy, tells his kind of henchman that he wants her kidnapped, and that's where things really take off and go in a different, 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 different direction. This is a movie that if, if, if you've heard about it or if you've heard people talk about it and it sounds like if you've seen one of the 10,000 uh, gifts uh, that has been made out of this movie, which I I'm actually quite annoyed with because uh, I feel like people 
were really willy-nilly with spoilers, especially on Twitter with this movie, especially because it was a movie that, that a lot of people saw at like festivals and stuff like that, and a lot of people like me maybe didn't want to stream it, didn't want to rent it, wanted to wait for disc. It's a movie that you should really avoid being spoiled on, so I'll just say that it's good and you should see it. Um, and it's coming soon to Shudder, I think, if you're a Shudder subscriber. But the, the kind of in to Mandy is that this is a world where the lines between kind of fantasy and reality are blurred. It's, it's almost like, um, it's almost like Phantasm-esque where we have this kind of slipstream reality, um, where it's like this very heavy metal, um, very, um, horror movie reality, uh, that, that, that the characters are living in. Beautiful cinematography, um, beautiful kind of slow droning score, uh, movie that takes its time and, and, and then it gets to action and then it doesn't take its time and everything it hits the wall and go crazy. Um, but Nicolas Cage is a revenge picture. He's, he's on this road to revenge trying to take down uh, the people who have wronged him. It's almost like this like journey where he meets different people along the way. He meets Bill Duke. He meets the Richard Brake, the great Richard Brake, the great Bill Duke. And they kind of help him on his journey. Uh, but it's, it's this beautiful, almost like uh, metal album cover um, adventure, road adventure he goes on uh, through the Pacific Northwest, which I guess was they filmed um, in Belgium, which I wouldn't have guessed until I watched the special features. Which this disc, not only does it look good, because I don't trust streaming, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't love streaming, um, but the disc gives you a kind of half hour, not really like a, not fluffy, not like an EPK thing, like a real good uh, making of. Uh, I really, really recommend Mandy. Uh, great performances all around, beautiful cinematography, um, incredible production value. For a small movie, it feels like such a big movie, and that's that's really what stuck with me, especially in the especially in like the last third of this movie. This movie feels so big, and that's that's, that's what I really really appreciate this about this movie. Where where Suspiria is is dense and um, and awe inspiring in its um, in its complexity and its period detail and its set set design. Mandy does uh, almost a very similar thing on probably like a, a, a good less than a quarter of the budget, uh, but it just feels huge. Um, and it's got, it's just, it's just so cool and it's got such a neat color palette, but it's, it's not gonna be for everyone. Uh, just like Suspiria, it's not gonna be for everyone. This is, maybe that's the unifying factor of these two movies I'm talking about. They're not for everyone. Uh, but I, I do wholeheartedly endorse everyone seeing them and making their own decisions, um, but boy, what a double feature I had this weekend. Today for book recommendations, I've got two things to tell you about since I talked to you about two movies. Uh, I really, really, really recommend We Sold Our Souls by Grady Hendrix. Um, if you've read Horror Store or you read My Best Friend's Exorcism or you've enjoyed his nonfiction book along with Will Erickson, um, Paperbacks from Hell, this is uh, We Sold Our Souls is my favorite uh, Grady Hendrix book. Like Mandy, it is a kind of heavy metal, supernatural road uh, novel. It is about a, uh, a, a woman who used to be in a band. We, when we first meet her, she's, she's been working at a hotel. Like it's, it's a really crappy job. Um, she kind of longs for the days when she was in a band. They were almost really successful. They were about to break through and then something happened and, and her ex-bandmate became really famous and, and she's working at this hotel. And as you go through, it's kind of told out of order. As you go through, you kind of see why. And the name of the, of the book is We Sold Our Souls. So maybe uh, that's a hint as to what happened. Uh, but it's, it's really, really great. Uh, books like this, uh, where you think there's going to be kind of like a lot of like references to a subgenre or or or, or kind of some kind of gimmick or in, it's not a reference fest. Even the 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 love of metal, the love of heavy metal, seems kind of baked into the story. Um, it seems very um, very natural for this character to have, and it's not just like, hey, remember this Black Sabbath album? It's not really like that. It's just a good story, well told. It has it touches on like ideas of like conspiracy theory and. And, and hollow earth theory basically it's 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 really really smart while at the same time being uh super fun and readable and uh kind of um and touching uh it like like grady hendrix's other books where it's like this this you think you're getting one thing and then he kind of pulls the rug out from under you and makes you feel the feels um and it's a it's a really really top-notch uh book 
And the other reading recommendation, you might have seen these online or you might even own one for yourself, uh, is uh, volume two, issue number one, Fangoria Magazine is relaunched and you can see that spine. It's been relaunched as a quarterly uh, by Cinestate Entertainment. They, they kind of bought Fangoria and they were, they were like, Let's let's do it to it, and let's let's uh, bring in Phil Nobile Jr. and uh, Meredith Borders, uh, and 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 really make this the best it can be. Like if you like reading film blogs on the internet, and you you have like certain favorite uh, writers, film writers, they kind of all appear in here. It's it's a it's a it's a who's who, and it's just a, a beautiful production. These are thick pages. It's like a hundred pages. Um, I really enjoyed going through this, especially this month, as like. I wasn't gonna read the like three stories about the the new Halloween until I'd seen it, and there's this great uh, interview with David Gordon Green in there. It's really good. Um, I wasn't gonna read about Suspiria until I'd seen it, so it was just kind of fun to this month just put the phone down. It's not available as like a digital file. It's not available as a Kindle thing. You have to actually order it. You have to actually subscribe to it, and you get uh, four of these beautiful issues. It's just really really well done. I, I was I was kind of all in for the nostalgia factor of like oh Fangoria is coming back. I, I was a subscriber before. Of course I'll be a subscriber now. Um, and I really wasn't expecting. It didn't need to be as good as it is. It's really really good. Uh, so there you go. Uh, we sold our souls and Fangoria. That's reading material for when you're done contemplating your own mortality after you've watched Mandy and Suspiria back to back like I did. Um, I'm Adam Caesar. This is Project Black T-Shirt. If you want to find out more about me or my books or uh, my work, it's all, all the links are down, down below on the website. If you sign up for my mailing list, I'll send you a free sample. S the Summer Job just recently uh, came out with an audio book by the wonderful Stacey Glembowski uh, narrating it. Uh, it's really good. You should check it out. It's on Audible right now. All right. See you guys next week.